Welcome to Biblical Christian Content, where we like to keep the content biblical. Let's go. As always, welcome to the channel. I really appreciate everyone tuning in. I have to petition everyone that's watching this video. If you desire to help me reach more people with biblical truth and for the algorithm to push me forward and put this content forward, then do me a favor. At minimum, hit the like and hit the subscribe to generate more push to get biblical Christian content to more hearts, more minds, and more souls. Thank you. Enjoy the video. actually begin to see there is a there's a true beauty and holiness there's something if you read Psalm 119 you see the heart of David as a as a man of God he's longing after the the statutes of God and the commandments he doesn't find them to be some horrible thing anymore and for John tells us in first John that it's it's not grievous it's not burdensome so it's like we've been freed and there's a joy in it and I mean, when God's grace lays hold of a man, it inevitably produces what you see in Psalm 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, stands in the way of the sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. See, delight in the law of the Lord. Suddenly there's a delight in something. You recognize in this very sermon, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Something, see, who can manipulate thirst and hunger? God can, and he does. I mean, David says this, with my whole heart, I keep your precepts. Psalm 119, 69. Listen, let me tell you something. Any supposed manifestation of grace that does not do that in an individual. It's nothing but cheap grace. It's a fake. That's the issue. Do you come broken? Yes. You don't come claiming, well, I'm here. I've kept the will of the Father. Now you've got to accept me. That's never it. We do business with Christ as, as those who are broken people. We come with no price in our hands. We buy without price. But let me tell you this, God is in the business when he goes to saving somebody, he saves them well. And the, the fact is, teaching or believing anything else than this reality only deceives and deludes men. And it results in people getting to the end and hearing these words. You lived the way you wanted to, not with regards. I mean, you, you live like God's word just really, it was kind of a take it or leave it thing. I were saved by grace. You know, in the end, grace is going to cover this. It doesn't really matter if I submit or don't submit. And look, listen to this. I'm going to give you now a series of texts that speak about what this grace through faith actually looks like. Listen, <clears throat> Hebrews 5, 9, being made perfect, Jesus became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him. Wow, we read that. You know, you read that in Scripture. It's like, wait, shouldn't that be, say, those who believe in Him? No, that's, you know, the Bible freely talks like this. If we've got eyes to see, it talks like this all over the place. Brethren, what I want you to do right now is I want you to turn to one of the clearest portions in Scripture that deals with this. It's found in James chapter 2. Turn over there, James 2. <clears throat> because here's the thing. In James 2, we get... The fullest, what I would call as a fullest biblical treatise on works and faith. But here's the thing. Doing the will of the Father is basically good works. 
And that's it. What should our life look like? Doing the will of the Father. When you do the will of the Father, what is that? Well, it's something you do. It's a work you do. And so here's what I'm going to do. As we read through this, every place where it says work, I'm going to substitute the will of the Father. This is the same. Nobody's going to argue that. I'm not corrupting Scripture by doing that. But I think you'll hear this in a bit of a different light. James 2, verse 17 Substituting, doing the will of the Father, every place you see the word works. 2.17. So, so faith by itself. That means faith without doing the will of the Father. If you, if you just say you have this faith and it's all by itself. If it does not have doing the will of the Father, it's dead. But someone will say, you have faith, and I have doing the will of the Father. Show me your faith apart from your doing the will of the Father. I'll show you my faith by doing the will of the Father. You believe God is one. See, so you have these, you know, you assent to these truths. Well, that's great. The demons do that, and they shudder. Verse 20, do you want to be shown, you foolish person? And that is, it's a fool who basically says, I've got faith, and I don't care about the work aspect of this. It's a foolish person. Faith apart from doing the will of the Father is useless. For as the body apart from the Spirit is dead, so also faith apart from doing the will of the Father is dead. I have not butchered Scripture by making that substitution right there. That is absolutely an equivalent. The good works and doing the will of the Father is absolutely synonymous. And so you see what's being said. Brethren, John, in his own dogmatic fashion, says it like this. 1 John 2, 4, Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments, is a liar. Wow. It doesn't get any more dogmatic than that in Scripture. If you say you know Christ, if you say you know the Father, you see, and that's what we're dealing with, right? Jesus says, I never knew you. This is what we're dealing with. You say, I know him. He says, not if you didn't keep my commandments. Not if you didn't keep my Father's commandments. If you didn't keep my Father's commandments, I don't know you. Because the people I know, I save, and I save them well. And I save them from their rebellion. And you're given every indication you're not somebody that I knew and went to work on to save. You lived without law. You lived by this supposed faith, but it lacked works. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word... In Him truly the love of God is perfected. By this we may know that we are in Him. You see, it's a test. It, it'll prove what you are.